This is an ICOM IC260A. It's an all mode 2 meter radio. And it covers FM, upper and lower sideband, and CW. Uh, it's not working, obviously. Um, this is the A version, so this covers. Let's see, I believe, I believe the frequency range is 143.8 to 148.1999. And this one has some problems. Uh, the receive isn't working. I can open the squelch. I get nothing. There's nothing on the meter. When I hit transmit, transmit light comes on, but I'm not getting any output. It's kind of interesting here. I'm going to hold a handy talkie next to the radio. Right now the radio is tuned to 145.5. This hand handy talkie is tuned to 145.5. And I'm picking up Obviously I'm picking up a signal. I'm not transmitting. And you know, a foot or two away, I'm still picking it up. When I hit transmit, there's no change. But now when I talk into the mic, one, two, three, test, one, two, three, test. One, two, three, test, one, two, three, test. Hello, hello, hello. I can, okay, I can hear audio coming out of the handy talkie. So obviously the exciter's working. The exciter's working. There's no transmit power. This will transmit either 1 watt or 10 watts, depending on the swell, swell switch being pulled in or out. Um, like I say, no receive. I tried plugging in an external speaker. Still no receive. So the next step is I'm going to have to uh, open the unit up and we'll have to take some measurements and try to find out what's wrong with this unit. This one came from a ham fest. This was also in a... Uh, dysfunctional box of stuff a guy had and he got rid of it said it didn't work and he wasn't lying so maybe we can fix it um, I have to check if this has one of those power output bricks this may have the same problem as that other icon I worked on earlier I don't know we'll have to see so the next step will be uh, crack the case and see what we find to do a little disconnecting here. You really want to mark all these cables if you take it apart. Otherwise, uh, you're going to have problems. External speaker jack in the back of here of this heat sink. An external key jack for a code key. take these shields off because they'll probably have to come off anyway. Maybe I wouldn't have had to disassemble this quite this far. But I want to check it out real good. Uh, what do we got here? One more. And there it is. Receiver. Transmitter looks like. And of course the power units in back here. You got an external speaker jack, code key jack, power. Here's an accessory socket behind here. And of course, uh oh, uh oh. oh. We got screws missing in this shield. That's not a good sign. That means somebody's been in it. And there it is. 
another power brick. Huh. I wouldn't be surprised if that's our problem. Yeah, I bet it'll be hard finding one of these power bricks if that's a problem. But maybe this one can be repaired like the other one. I think the first thing I'm going to tackle is uh, get the receive running. Check some voltages. Make sure uh, the power's okay. The um, display seemed a little dim to me. Although they're old LEDs and I'm used to the new ones which are a lot brighter. filters here. Boy these things are well built. I always like ICOMs. The old ICOMs anyway. I don't know about the new ones. That's uh that's good engineering I think. Plus you can work on it. Look at no surface mount. <laughs> that's nice. Okay, time to start doing some troubleshooting and see what we find. Like I say, first we'll try and see if we can get the receive working and then figure out if this transmit power brick is bad. I'll, um, I'll connect the exciter up and see if I'm getting any output directly from the uh, exciter. Well, what a lucky day. Uh, on the internet I actually found some guy that had posted board pictorials for this unit. And uh, <laughs> I took it apart. If only all repairs were this easy. I can't flip it over now because I've got some wires hanging. But there was a cable that was loose underneath. So it's working. Kind of. Test, test, one, two, three, test. Hello, test. Test one, two, three. It's still only, well, the output's only about uh, 100 milliwatts, so we still got a problem with the transmitter. But the receiver's working good. Hello, test, hello, test. Test one, two, three, test. One, two, three, test. Test one, two, test. Test one, two, three, test. Hello, test. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have an external speaker hooked up right now. Um, anyway, the receiver is actually pretty good. Testing one, two, three. I see I have a light out and the meter, that can be fixed. I'll replace that with an LED anyway. Anyway, the next step is to find out why we have low transmit output. Should be putting out 1 watt on low power and 10 watts on high. So that's the next step. Well, once again, it appears the problem is the output power brick here. The SC-1013. So, I'm going to have to pull this out. I did take some measurements. This is a similar device, the M57713. And if you look at the pins on that, here's pin 1, which is the RF input. Pin 2 is one of the DC supplies. Pin 3 is a bias supply. Pin 4 is the second VCC supply. Pin 5 is the output. And 6 is the ground, which is the tabs, mounting tabs here. And it's a similar to this chip here. So you've got, you can see the input here, DC power supply, the bias supply, second DC supply, and then the RF output. So what I'm gonna do pull it pull this out, 
take it apart and see if it's the same problem with a crack in the the uh, ceramic substrate here. I see one here is that output module and here you can see where the the RF input comes in through this connector uh, right here. This is an, actually an RCA plugs. RF in comes into pin 1. You've got your two power supplies here and then the output on pin 5 goes through pin diodes to the output connector here. I measured it's getting the proper voltages so it's pretty much 90% uh, certainty that this power module is bad. If I can't repair that, I'll have to try to find another one. I'll look on the internet, but hopefully this will be the same problem that I found in the other ICOM that I repaired. So the next step, I got unsolder these um, five pins, remove the remove the module power brick take off the top cover which will expose the substrate and the transistors. There's likely a driver and a final transistor in here with associated uh, it's got you know strip line parts on it. It's got in in that substrate are inductors that feed the power into it etc. So that's the next step. These are actually pretty easy to work on. All the connectors come out in the back back of the unit disconnects quite easily. Here you can see the back. Power on the right. On the left you've got the upper connector is your uh, UHF output connector. I've got a adapter on it now. And then two mini phone jacks on the bottom are for the key and the external speaker and then there's a switch here for a memory switch. So Time to proceed to uh, taking out the power brick. I have removed the um, power amp out of the back of the unit off the heat sink here. Just had two screws holding it down. Of course, there's heat sink compound here. Um, if you do this, make sure you know where all the wire connections go. So here is the actual power amp and I carefully removed the lid exposing the inside. If you do this be very very careful. There's like a silicone sealant around this cap and if you take a exacto knife and slowly work your way around the perimeter it will release. Start in the back and then carefully pry up in the back here get it started at an angle and then be very careful as you get to the end that you don't break any of the connections off here but it comes off quite easy I can't see anything on a visual inspection right now that's jumping out at me I'll have to put it under a microscope and see if I can find anything looks like here's a driver transistor and the output here and of course the output comes out here on pin 5. Pin 6 is just the tabs here, the, the ground is pin 6. So there again pin 1 is your, let me point here, your RF input comes in here on pin 1. Pin 2 is your VCC supply number 1. Then you've got your base bias supply here. And then you've got VCC number two, and then the RF output here. So, and this is the ceramic substrate that the circuitry is all built on. If I can repair this, I'm not going to do a video on that. Um, I already did one on one of my last videos that I repaired another ICOM unit, if you're interested in how I did that. I'm going to see if I can find one of these. Probably not very easy. Or it may be a pull that you'll have questionable uh, how, how well it is. But I'll look under the microscope and see what we find. Hopefully we can fix this one too. It would be nice. I'd like to get this rig working again. 
Well, I thought I'd uh, put this under the microscope and do a little checking here. And um, right here is the RF output, and it looks like a coupling cap here because we don't have continuity. That's probably just a cap. But then we have continuity all the way back. Moving this way. It looks like this is the collector, the output. So we got continuity to the output pin. And power wise, we got. Our V plus su supply has got continuity to the collector, but here's where the problem is. I'm going to go to the diode function now, and you can't see the meter, but here's the collector, and I'm not sure, but I think this is the base here, if this is a common base. I'm getting a diode drop here and reversing the leads I get an open circuit okay that's looks like a, a diode drop if that's the collector now going from here to here and I'm assuming now that this is that this over here is the emitter or the input I'm getting I'm getting a direct short zero and reversing the leads and this is the same point here I'm getting zero so it appears and th this is the the output transistor it appears that we've got a base emitter short um, I looked over the board hoping to find a crack in the substrate and there's no sign of it here's the driver the driver here well I found a source for this uh, PA believe it or not um, it may be a gamble it was on AliExpress so I'm gonna order one of them and we'll see what we get <laughs> hopefully hopefully it's the real McCoy so I'll have to end this video and um, if I get the chip sometime in this century I'll uh, maybe update the video we'll see but in the meantime remember if you're working on a high voltage be careful and never forget what my assistant says Keep one hand behind your back and uh, always be careful.